Despite Carl being a highly successful scholar, he still, some would say, lived a little outside of his means. As well as providing financially for his wife and their many children, he had to maintain his house in Uppsala, with its incredible garden that he used for experiments. On top of that, he'd taken out a hefty loan to purchase two countryside estates, one of which he built a museum to store his specimens. He had, in short, money problems. One day, he took time to watch pearl mussels being fished and became curious about the process by which these strange little creatures formed these rare, splendid and highly prized objects known as pearls. Divers would have to open many, many shells for the vanishing chance they might make a small fortune by finding a single pearl. He wondered if there was a surefire way to artificially force mussels to create pearls and in so doing, making him rich. He quickly fished out a method. He drilled a hole into the shell of a mussel and introduced a small piece of limestone, hung on a piece of silver wire, which formed the center of the pearl. It wasn't instant. It took five to six years to form. But still, it guaranteed pearls. He wrote eagerly to the Swedish government and waited patiently for them to snap up his offer. They took 13 long years to respond and invite him to come reveal his method under a vow of secrecy. He explained the method and showed them the pearls, which a jeweler pronounced to be of high quality. The state, satisfied, bought his patent for 3,000 platter. That's a lot of money. Carl was jumping for joy, finally able to pay off all of his debts and provide for his family. He blessed the generosity of the state. However, they themselves sold the patent on to a merchant for the same amount of money, but with a share of 50% in all of his future profits. Carl should have thought twice before sharing his pearls of wisdom.